This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. Our website is ccc.qbook.tv, where you can find other audio and video episodes with photos, links, and information related to today's conversation. Subscribe to leave comments and access research episodes with applied topics and research reports. Hi, clients. We're ready to talk trash. Yeah, we here we are talking of Asian marketing, and we are back in Singapore for another video. This is our final video in Singapore. Well, final for now in this series. And today we're going to look at trash. And specifically, what's interesting here is we're going to look at the channel that this trash gets distributed in, and it's trash that begins where most of the marketing textbooks end, which is consumer's disposal. Right. right in fact, yeah. it used to be in marketing textbooks you didn't even have that. Yes, indeed. It just yeah. ended with consumption. That's it, yes. And That's now we're a little point. bit more eco-sensitive, we add disposal. Yeah, we start to think about the tail end, what happens basically when you put it in the trash can, exactly. it doesn't disappear by magic, and this whole show starts to tell that story. I right. think it does a really nice job. It does. They, they begin by showing what the channels are, the stages that the trash goes through from the time, the trash collector. Now this is a guy who on the weekends, he has another job, but he has this part-time job, he'll go around the flats in the blocks, and he'll call out and people will hear him coming and they'll put their trash out. Mostly it's paper, you know, newspaper wrapped we're up. We're kind of talking more of the sort of recyclable stuff. Recyclable we? stuff, but it could yeah. be electric. I saw in the video there's some speakers, maybe some monitors, something like this. Yeah. Everything that is recyclable. Now in Taiwan we have to separate our trash ourselves. Yeah. But in Singapore, things are a little bit different. They, it all goes down a chute. Everybody's flat has a chute and just dump it down there. And I was really hard for me to adjust because I'm so used in Taiwan. You get if you if you don't separate right, you get yelled at. Yes, yes. And I'm not sure anything else happens, but yes, you are <laughs> supposed to put out those different categories, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, you're supposedly you're supposed to do that, and they can sometimes separate it quite fine. Then they all go to recycle locations all around town. In Singapore, this guy comes around and he calls out, and they come out, and it's a little bit of classical conditioning. People are used to it. But I really love how the channel flows. Yeah, he, he rings a bell, or what does he do? There's he calls out, I think, was what it was. He's, he's yelling out, and he has it, special yes. sayings. And I think, you know, if you live in Singapore for a number of years, you get used to it, yeah. you know. And he, you just dump your papers out there, and he has string. He'll tie it all up for you and get it all ready. So it's interesting to see this guy working hard, but then our film crew follows his collection. Well, oh, I'll tell you one, one thing interesting. Keep, uh. keep your eye out for when he collects on a floor. He just dumps it into one area. Then he goes on another floor, puts that in an area. Then he'll come down the elevator mm. and stop the door from closing, go out and get his load, go to the next floor, get his load, go out and get the next floor. I don't know if you've done it in the UK, but you could not leave that thing around in the US. Trash? People exactly. steal your trash. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Am I wrong? Right? But I think that's the great thing about Asia. You know, people aren't instinctively. Uh, the stealing sort of type. So right. there's quite, right. quite a right. lot of uh, that's done on trust. So right. I love that a lot bit of trust in the video. Yeah. yeah, right. So he just hold the elevator open, go out and get it each floor, get down. Then he'll pile that up on his small cart or truck, and then the big truck will come, which is you know another level of the channel. They'll load it all up, and then our film crew follows that all the way down to the central distribution center where they process it. Yeah. So it's really a lot about channels. Um, this could happen anywhere, but in Asia, because a lot of places are so you know population density, dense, isn't it? Yeah. Right, you got to have a way to deal with this trash issue and so this is one way. In Taiwan maybe we'll shoot our own video about how we deal with it in Taiwan, which is more your own responsibility. Right? It is, it's kind of, I think it's interesting here because we have the whole, a certain element of recycling, but actually it tends to be the older, those that are unemployed or for some reason haven't got mm -hmm. into a business. And then they tend to go around and pick the in trash. Ta in Taiwan, coming. you mean? Yes, yeah, right, yeah, you see a lot of that. In fact, I used to work at a university, mm -hmm. and they had a recycle program. Because, of course, you, re you sell it. In, in a video, he weighs it, and he, he pays money. Yeah. You know? So there is money involved. You know, it, it is a real uh, exchange system. So these universities I was at, they were encouraging students to put all their trash in the different trash cans, you know, fen lei, you know, everything. And in the end, didn't help. Why? Because every morning, an old lady came in the campus, and she was picking up all the trash to go sell at all the cans and papers that were valuable. Yes, that's it. I mean, it's I, in, here it's kind of uh, 
because you've got this group who will do that, it becomes mm. its own system, I right. think, which is kind of right. quite quite helpful. And people here actively, it kind of looks messy for a while. They might leave some cans out of the park. They've gone to you know to drink as a group of friends. Leave their coke cans, other paper cups out. You think what a mess. But sure enough, like within well, 30 minutes, Somebody it's gone. Along and... One of the recycler ladies yeah. or, or right. men come round right. with their scooter. And here, I mean, of course, we see that piled up. And like we see in the video, it's a little bit more organized in yeah, the Singapore yeah, situation. Right. I think in Singapore it's a bit more organized than it is in Taiwan. And in Taiwan you're supposed to do it yourself, but in Singapore they actually have a system where they allow this to function this way. So let's take a look at this 10-minute video. Sounds good.
伊也是大家。
the trash collection and all the channel involved, what do you think? I think it's great because, as, as you said before, I think one of the critical things we often forget is once you throw something in the trash, what happens? And the way these guys have shown us that channel and a little bit of insight there, I think yeah. it's, it's very, very, very helpful. Yeah, I think that's a, kind of the marketing thing. You know, I'm always telling my students, in marketing, it's all around you, this idea of exchange. It's all around. And this is what we're talking about. It's exchange. This guy goes around. He makes money by buying the trash. The people selling it, they're selling it lower than if they took it to the recycle themselves. But the convenience factor, they just right, the, right out the door. The guy picks it up for you, ties it up for you. You don't even need to tie it up. He does it all for you. He's really good at it. And he takes it down to the channel. This is a form of exchange. It's just everywhere. Yeah. I, and as you say, as we become greener, of course, and that awareness about being a little bit more green, of course, drives some of this. But I, so. I think the... <laughs> But the interesting thing is that these things do have economic value. Right, and exactly. Out yeah. of the back end, people are looking to recycle, opportunities to make money. So, a little bit of classical conditioning in there. How people get used to it, they fall in line as he comes up, they get used to that kind of call he has to get the paper out. So, I think from a marketing perspective, a little bit of that. From an Asian perspective, again, it's just this small business thing where you can go out and you can, everybody wants to be their own boss and they can run the show. And um, I'm not sure what his cash flow is, but uh, I was told he just does it on the weekend as extra money. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so again, a bit like Taiwan, you see yep. people who do do that a little bit on the side. It was interesting too when we were in Shanghai uh, just recently in the summer. Then I, I saw people going around picking like mm. bottles, cans out of the trash can. Oh, really? And I, I said, I said, well, this is odd because they didn't look like the normal profile mm. of someone who would be picking trash. And then someone told me, actually, these were students. I thought, geez, you know, is, 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 is Professor Warden here? Is he, like, giving some students some very interesting projects to do? Okay, and then in all seriousness, I realized when we talked to a few people that actually they could make, you know, an interesting, let's call it an interesting amount of money. So it was kind of worthwhile going the bottles and the cans. That kind of turned into well, this is funny money. you say this because I have a story. My brother-in-law, when he first came to America, had a similar idea. He was very young, he came to do his master and PhD. And he couldn't understand why people leave their cans around. <laughs> because it's like money on the ground, right? Because in Taiwan, somebody be enterprising would already taken this, this, yeah. this market niche up, you know? So he collected cans for a while. I think it lasted about a week before he got very tired of it and realized he wasn't making enough for his effort. But, you know, he was just shocked that, you know, this niche is not taken care of. Yes, I mean, uh, as I say, there, it, I, I can't remember, I did calculate, but it was probably almost enough, someone could generate almost enough to make, say, their meals for a week that way. Oh, really? Which was yeah, interesting yeah, for a student, yeah. you know, on a budget. You know, I think it's not so much, that it's the whole economic thing, it's not so much how much spending money people have, but there's a fundamental Chinese value on the frugality, yeah. that even if you had it, if there were cans on the ground and you could make that for a week to yeah. save that money for food, you would do it. Yeah. It's not that they're poor. No. You know? But exactly. I mean, it's another theme that runs through so much of what we talk about in our shows, the care that Chinese consumers take right. in terms of value. And, I mean, we, we see it extending into things like the service scape. Right. You know, how often do you see a really sort of luxurious service scape with lots of drapes and lots of decor and <laughs> wood and extravagance and so on. They tend to be fairly minimalistic. Minimal. Minimal. Frugal yeah. is minimized. I know, Clyde, you've done a lot of work around that on right. the TV shopping, of course, right. Right. and where you see the service scape there, even in that setting, very the TV minimal, setting. Trying to look like a night market, basically. Yeah. You yeah. Know, light bulbs, everything very basic. Yeah. Very, very basic. So again, and you know, not because of production thing. value. They've got the money. Indeed. They're yes. making money hand over fist. Yeah. But it's it, the value. It, the, the core value of frugality, being careful, getting the best bang for your buck, basically. And yeah. who's going to beat the Chinese uh, to teach us on that yeah, one? Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay, so that kind of wraps up our series of videos from Singapore. We'll have more in the future, but this was a really interesting opportunity to get a whole bunch together. Yeah. And I think we're jumping back to Taiwan, Shanghai, something like this in the next few. So we got to get that together. So that's our homework. Yeah. And, <laughs> and we hope you stay with us and watch some more interesting talk of Asian marketing. Great. We're enjoying it. Hope you are too. This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. Our website is ccc.qbook.tv.
where you can find other audio and video episodes with photos, links, and information related to today's conversation. Subscribe to leave comments and access research episodes with applied topics and research reports.